In this video, we present the solution to question number 16 from the practice exam number three for math 2270, in which case we need to find an orthogonal basis for the subspace W spanned by the vectors x1, x2, x3, which are vectors in R4 that we see right here. In order to compute an orthogonal basis, we're going to need to use the Graham-Smith procedure, for which recall what that looks like. What we're going to do is we're going to take our first vector x, or v1, just to be the first vector x2, assuming it's not the zero vector. If the zero vector is there, we would discard it. So uh, v1 here is just going to be x1, so it's just going to be 1, 0, 1, 1. No change is necessary as we do v1. v2, on the other hand, what we need to do to compute v2 is we need to take x2, the second vector in our basis right here. We need to subtract from it v1 dot x2 over v1 dot v1 times that by v1, okay? Now with real vectors, it doesn't matter the order of the dot product, but for complex vectors, it does. The Hermitian product changes the conjugate if you get the wrong order. So make sure the x2 shows up second in this situation here. So x2, given what it was listed above, you get 0, 2, 0, 3. We're gonna subtract from it. We have to take some dot products of v1 with x2, which notice v1 is just x1, right? So we take the dot product there, we're going to get 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 3. Then we have to take the dot product of v1 with itself, which you're going to get 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 1. And then we take v1, which is 1, 0, 1, 1, like so. Simplifying these calculations, again, we get 0, 2, 0, 3. Not ready to do anything with that one yet. And then we have to subtract what we have here. We have a 3 over 3, so that conveniently cancels out. Uh, we get 1, 0, 1, 1. So taking the difference, we're going to end up with 0 minus 1, which is a negative 1, 2 minus 0, which is a 2, 0 minus 1, which is a negative 1, and then 3 minus 1, which is a 2. So we end up with the vector negative 1, 2, negative 1, 2. Okay, now the next step was we need to compute V3. V3 right here, which by the graham smith formula, we get that V3 is going to equal X3 minus V1 dot x3 over v1 dot v1 times v1 and then we have to also subtract v2 dot x3 over v2 dot v2 times v2 so let's work that one out x3 like we saw previously is negative 3 negative 1 1 and 5 so we record that down negative 3 negative 1 uh, 1 and 5 was the numbers and then we have to subtract from that v1 dot x3, which v1, remember, was just x1. So we need to take the dot product of v1 and v3, or an x3 right there, excuse me. So if we do that calculation, v1 dot x3, that gives us a negative 3 plus 0 plus 1 plus 5, and that should just equal a 3, right? So I'm going to record that down below. So we end up with a 3 over. We're supposed to also compute v1 dot v1, but we did that calculation earlier, right? Uh, that one also turned out to be 3 because you had 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 1. So you get a 3 right there. And then we're going to times it by uh, v1, which we've seen already a couple times, 1, 0, 1, 1, like so. Next, we have to take v2 dot x3, which v2 is right here. We're going to take negative 1, 2, negative 1, and 2. And we can see... We can see uh, x3 right here. So we take its dot product. You're going to get up 3 minus 2 minus 1 plus 10, uh, in which case you're th that's going to be a 10, right? Because those things just cancel out right there. And then we have to do the dot product of v2 with itself, for which you're going to get 1 plus 4 plus 1 plus 4. Uh, notice that's going to be 10 over 10, so that also cancels out. So that's kind of nice. All these coefficients, all the Fourier coefficients are going to cancel out here. And then the next thing we get is going to be just x, uh, it's not x, excuse me, v2, which is negative 1, 2, negative 1, and 2, like so. So continuing on with v3 right here, we see that v3 is going to equal negative 3, negative 1, 1, and 5, minus 1, 0, 1, 1, minus we end up with a negative 1, 2, negative 1, and 2. So combining this, the components there, I'm going to move it over here.
here so you can see it a little bit better. So we're going to take negative three minus one plus one, so that's a negative three. We're then gonna take negative one minus zero minus two, so that's also a negative three. Uh, we're gonna take one minus one, that cancels out, then plus one, so that's a plus one there. And then lastly, we take five minus one minus two, so that should just give us a two when we're done, like so. And so this is our x3. So now let's record the orthogonal basis that we computed here. So our orthogonal basis is gonna consist of the vectors v1, v2, v3, which recall what we have here, v1 turned out to be 1, 0, 1, 1. v2 turned out, and you know, we looked down what we had before, negative 1, 2, negative 1, 2. Negative 1, 2, negative 1, 2. And then the last one was v3, which we saw here on the very bottom. Uh, this was negative 3, negative 3, 1, and 2, which we then record that down. Negative 3, negative 3, 1, and 2. And so this then gives us an orthogonal basis for W here, which you could double check that this thing is orthogonal with each other. That's a good thing to double check. It's not too hard to calculate. If we take the dot product of the first, uh, the first two vectors there, you're gonna get negative one plus zero minus one plus two, that's a zero. Take um, the first and the last one, you're gonna get negative three plus zero plus one plus two, so that's zero. And then the last one right here, you're going to get 3 minus 6, that's a negative 3, uh, minus 1 plus 4. And so assuming we did all that correctly there, uh, that should then add up to be 0 as well. If you were then asked to compute a orthonormal basis, then you'd have to normalize each of these vectors. We're not required to do that, so the fact that they're not normal vectors is acceptable for us.